Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. You know how some pens in your collection are special because there's a story behind them? Like this 1954 Parker 51 that I'm keeping for my friend Ron. It was purchased new by his father Dennis in Montreal as part of a fountain pen, pencil, and ballpoint set in this beautiful case. These writing instruments are imbued with decades of love and are quite rightly family heirlooms. That's why it's quite remarkable to have a brand new pen that already has a good deal of history to it right out of the box. This is my second Waterman Karen. This one in a beautiful black and gold called Black Sea. And the saga of the Black Seas is one that will either regale you or bore you right now. <laughs> And I got myself another Waterman Karen because I purchased this one a couple of years ago and it is simply the most exquisite looking and writing fountain pen I've ever used but I had to have another one so I indulged on fountain pen day and got myself a black sea but let's open it up Here's our apple bomb box. And, and of course, a couple more Stroop waffles. Another apple bomb notebook. And here is the pen box, nicely wrapped as always from apple bomb. They always do such a great job of packing. The first black Karen came with just the blue box and no sleeve on the outside not that i need a sleeve but that's how they come brand new so i was suspect of that and here's the waterman blue box and i'm getting a, a pen sleeve with it as well here is the pen ah and it's the original look at that it's the one i ordered originally i was expecting a medium because i said forget about the stub send me the medium because i just wanted the pen but they've sent me the stub. The next thing I need to look at is whether there is a converter with this pen because the first one that came did not have a converter with it. And I know they come with, con there it is. And there's the Waterman converter. I had to go out and buy one. So now I've got an extra one. And there they are together, a nice pair. Let's see what else Waterman has in the box. The Waterman brochure, of course, a couple of blue cartridges. And this says it's a Karen Black GT. So I'll be anxious to ink this pen up and put it through its paces and do a review. So I will go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then providing writing sample. But I want to tell you the saga of this pen's journey first. If you are just interested in the pen and not in its travels, just skip ahead using the chapters feature to the parts and features section of this video. Are they gone? Good. What a bunch of schmucks. <laughs> anyway, here's the skinny on this pen. Do you remember last November 2021? Of course you don't. I'll refresh your memory. The first Friday in November each year is International Fountain Pen Day. And in 2021, it was November 5th. There were a lot of sales and I used the discount to buy my second Waterman Karen. I think my first Waterman Karen in this gorgeous amber ronce called Marine Amber is one of the most beautiful fountain pens I've ever seen. I figured it needed a partner. So I ordered this one in black and gold called the Black Sea GT, gold trim. Applebaum had nib options, including a 1.1 stub. I thought it'd be really cool and rare to have a stub nib on a Karen, so I ordered it. A couple of months later, after New Year's Eve, I started getting antsy about the pen and I inquired. Apparently, the 1.1 stub nib is so rare, Waterman was having a tough finding one. At this point, I just wanted the pen, and since Waterman has a program that allows you to swap out your nib for another size, I figured if I wanted a different nib, I could get one later on that exchange program. When I bought this 
Amber Coran on Amazon. It came with a fine nib and I wanted a medium. I called Waterman. They sent me a shipping label and in 10 days round trip from Calgary to Paris and back, I had the medium nib. Easy peasy. I asked Applebaum to send me a medium Black Seas forthwith ASAP and quickly too. January 4th it is sent and January 20th I received the pen. There was no white outer sleeve on the blue Waterman box, which I thought was unusual. And then there was no converter with the pen, which was even more unusual. I had both the white sleeve and a converter with my Amazon purchase. I went to my pen store and bought a converter, but before I could ink the pen, I examined the nib under my loop, as I always do with a new pen, and I noticed there was a dent along the shoulder of the gold inlaid nib. This didn't affect how the pen wrote at all, but once I noticed it, I thought I'll never be able to look at it the same way. I'll always see it, right? And added to the lack of the white sleeve and converter, it just felt like I was receiving a, either a used pen or a demonstrator. I sent the pen back to Applebaum and waited for a replacement. Fast forward to April 2022 and I'm inquiring again. What's up with the pen? Well, apparently Waterman won't replace the pen under warranty because they felt I had damaged the pen myself. Nice. I immediately cancelled the order and within days, voila, I was told that it had been resolved and the pen was on the way to me. I received it May 16th and even though the box said it is a medium, it is in fact a broad. It looked like a stub to me with my bad eyes and through the camera during the unboxing. So I'm left with this question, what do I do about this? It's been six months since I ordered the pen. If I write with the pen, Waterman won't exchange it. And if I don't write with the pen, I'll never know how great it might have been. And I'll be waiting another six months for an exchange from a reluctant Waterman. So I decided to dip the pen and try the nib. And if I didn't like it, I could get Jack to cut it into an architect for me. Well, I got lucky and the pen writes beautifully. And welcome back to all of you Storytime haters to the parts and features portions of the review. And here is the Waterman Karen Black Sea with gold trim. Overall, the pen is one of the most beautiful pens in the world, as far as I'm concerned. The pen is a thin, cigar-like shape with a curved and gold end finial that is shaped like the hull of a boat, hence the French name Karen, which is French for hull. The pen is lacquer over brass and the hardware is 23 karat gold plated. From the top we see a pointed end and then the elegantly curved clip that is spring loaded so it has one of the best clip actions I've ever seen on a fountain pen. Beautifully engineered. It has the Waterman logo on the top and the typical Waterman slit in the center and that gentle upswept curve at the tip making it very easy to get into a pocket, a sleeve, or over some pages. The cap curves up to a gold cap ring that has a single groove on top and a slight roll at the bottom. And it has Waterman and France engraved very, very nicely and deeply. There is a tiny step down to the barrel, which is straight to about the middle and then tapers down to that elegantly curved hull-like gold end finial which has a black enameled button or insert in the end of it. The cap snaps off to reveal the stunning 18 karat gold inlaid nib that is shaped like the bow of a ship, according to Waterman. I know I'll get pushback from the anally retentive that this isn't precisely an inlaid nib, and in fact, Waterman calls it a, quote, highly integrated nib, but I find it easier to pronounce inlaid. And if you have a problem with that, well, you obviously don't get inlaid either, buddy. I'm not your buddy, friend. The long tapering section is made of black plastic. Or for you purists, it is a precious resin made from a secret family resin recipe and lovingly injected into the finest quality molds, cooled gently by rows of pretty maidens blowing softly and then polished to the highest quality luster by the gentle strokes of angels' wings. Dew picked and flown from Iraq, cleansed in the finest quality spring water, lightly killed and sealed in a succulent Swiss quintuple smooth full cream treble milk chocolate envelope and lovingly frosted with glucose. Constable Parrot ate one of those. To the rest of us, it is injection molded plastic. The feed is internal, 
and the nib and the feed are not removable. The back of the section has a filler hole right there and a letter denoting the size of the nib. In this case, it's an L. The Caden comes in fine, medium, and broad, labeled with an F, M, or an L for broad. French. Let's look closer at this 18 karat gold nib. I can't stop looking at it. It's so beautiful. And you know, if you pull this out in a meeting, you're going to get questions. And when they ask, what is that? You can answer, she's mine. <laughs> What's that, Basil? <laughs> Waterman says the nib is shaped to suggest the bow of a ship, but I think it also evokes the feeling of a sail, like the spinnaker on a racing yacht. It has the Waterman logo, 18K and 750 for the gold content. And there's no breather hole. The section unscrews to reveal the included Waterman converter. Now I have three of them actually for my two pens. And it kind of proves my point that the previous Karen I had was used or a demonstrator. The Waterman website even says the pen comes with a converter. The converter is a quality item with a silicone rubber nipple that provides a very secure snug fit. And the brass nozzle has two silicone O-rings here and here, one to prevent leaks and one to secure the barrel from coming loose during use. And the threads have only one start point, so no matter where you start screwing that barrel back on, it always lines that tailpiece up with the nib precisely. Something that is very much appreciated by those of us suffering from OCD. The inside of the cap has a plastic liner to help seal the nib from drying out. The cap posts very deeply and securely and makes for an even more delightfully elegant shape and superb balance. This could be the most beautiful and comfortably balanced fountain pen posted I've ever held and one of the reasons I now have two of them. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with, but the pen begs to be posted. As a metal pen, it feels unexpectedly light at 33 and a half grams, but that just might be the balance of the pen, making it feel like it just floats in your hand. I bought this pen from Apple Bomb for $234.93 Canadian, which includes the 15% discount for providing a review of a previous purchase, but does not include the $50 Canadian I had to pay in double extortion fees to DHL for having the pen shipped to me twice. Boo DHL. Applebaum lists available nibs as EF, F, M, B, and Stub, but only F, M, and B seem to be available from Waterman. The Karen model is available in four finish options, Black Sea with either gold or rhodium trim, marine amber with gold trim, and the deluxe gold and silver with gold trim. And it's available in rollerball, ballpoint, or fountain pen configurations. The pens come with a two-year limited warranty that you can extend to four years by simply registering your pen with Waterman on their website. As I mentioned previously, if you want to swap your nib for another, contact Waterman for the exchange. The nib cannot be used or the exchange is invalid. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Waterman Karen with a vintage Parker 51, a vintage Parker 45, a Pilot E95S, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Pilot E95S, the Parker 45, and the Parker 51 are all 14 karat gold nibs. And the Karen, of course, is 18 karat gold and the Metro is steel. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. Of course, you won't want to be writing with the E95S unposted as the cap is essential to writing with that pen. But it's remarkable how close each one of these pens is to each other when they're unposted. Almost identical between the Karen, the Parker 51, Parker 45, and the Pilot Metro. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the 
Waterman. Karen. Accent Grave. And it's the Black Sea. And it has an 18 karat gold broad nib. I just inked this up just now after cleaning it out. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet. Uh, I expected it to be a little bit wetter than that for a broad nib, but the nib is smooth as glass. My medium Karen actually has a good amount of feedback, so this one is a nice contrast. And the ink today is Ferris Wheel Press Roaring Patina or Patina Black. Here are some other black or dark gray sheening and shimmering inks. At the top we have a Jet Urbain Stormy Gray, which is a charcoal gray that has a gold shimmer to it. Then there's a Jet Urbain Shogun, which is a darker gray than the Stormy Gray, almost black, and it has a copper shimmer to it. And here is the Ferris Wheel Press Roaring Patina Black, and it has a very, very interesting gold shimmer, but it shades to a deep dark blue, blue-black, and has a very vibrant red sheen to it. I don't know if you can see that or not. But we're getting a lot of this gold sheen out of this pen. It's a nice combination. And as to line variation, well, you're not going to get very much because it's already pretty broad, but it's very soft and springy. The line it creates is slightly thicker in the vertical than the horizontal, which I suspected when I first looked at the pen. I thought it was a stub, but that's what the broad looks like. And the line is 0 0.7 millimeters which is a western between a medium and a broad and a Japanese broad. And for our quote. There's an old, old saying on earth, Mr. Sulu. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I know this saying. It was invented in Russia. And for some reverse writing. It is very scratchy and dry, and it's actually running out of ink. I don't think I'd ever want to reverse write with this pen. And for some quick writing. getting a couple of hard starts here but when I talk the nib tends to dry out I've got a feeling with all that particulate in there that it might be clogging up that feed because when it runs it runs wet see so at the beginning when I did this writing sample here it felt like it was getting a bit clogged up with that gold so I might have to do uh, an ink swap and and put some Take Sume from Hiroshizuku into this pen because that would be, again, a perfect lubricating ink for this pen. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, first I'd like to say that I absolutely adore the Waterman Karen. 
I'm finally glad I got my hands on the Black Sea with the gold trim. Both my Karens write beautifully and are stunningly gorgeous and incredibly well-balanced writing instruments. These are works of art and feats of brilliance in engineering and design. But I have a couple of beefs to get off my chest. So, rant mode on. At the risk of being labeled an old man sitting in his basement ranting at minor and insignificant in the scheme of things, first world problems, I'm a bit pissed at this whole pen transaction. First to Applebaum. If you can't get your hands on a particular nib, don't list it for sale on your website. And if the customer's choice of nib will hold up their order for months, at least let them know so they can make a decision to cancel or change it. Plus, don't sell your used demonstrators as new stock. It can't even be classified as new old stock because it is dented and it doesn't come with all the included accessories. Next to Waterman. I loved the customer service I received with my first Karen, the Amber. I actually got to speak to a real human being, very pleasant person on the phone for the nib exchange and the exchange from Canada to France and back was a mere 10 days and also the extension of the warranty from two to four years just for registering in the website is a nice bonus you had me as a lifelong fan with the pen and your service but then i'm accused of damaging the pen myself and then when i finally received my pen after six long months this happened see that that's unacceptable Literally, as I was writing this review and gushing about how beautifully designed and engineered this pen is, the cap ring falls off. Unacceptable in a pen worth more than $200 US, if you ask me. This is the second major issue to happen to a name brand plus $200 pen for me. Actually, a plus $600 pen. I won't mention the other one because I don't want my anger at Waterman to spill over to another brand. I'll wait to rant about that when the situation, if the situation resolves itself. But then, this isn't a Twisby, this is a Waterman for corn's sake. And you know what? I'm just going to fix this myself. I know my warranty will be voided because I've dared to fix it myself, but I don't want to have to wait another six months for a replacement, because it would probably come with the wrong nib on it, like this one did. They can't even put the right pen in the right box. Okay, rant mode off. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month, I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.